There's no shortage of fantastic cars when we asked owners to tell us about their car. I'm Chris Woodyard from usatoday.com, but today we've got a history maker. Tell us about this car. First of all, tell us who you are. I'm Jeff Lottman from Los from, Angeles. From Los Angeles. And tell us about this car. What makes it so special? This is the only world land speed record Jaguar in the world. What record did it set and when did it set it? In 1953, it went 172 miles an hour at Jebecki, Belgium with this man. And that's a great introduction for this man, Norman Dewis of Shropshire, England. You raced this car in 1953? 53, yeah, 53, yeah. And you set a record? Yeah, we set the record uh, in Belgium. Uh, we didn't anticipate that speed at all, but uh, there you are. You never know when you're doing these things what's going to be the end result. We was expecting probably 156, 58, but to, to record 172, I could not believe it. So when I finished, they said, have you got a problem with the car, Norman? I said, no. They said, well, you're slow. And uh, I said, well, I can't be slow. I pulled 6.3 through the front measured mile. And uh, they said, no, you're slow. Uh, the, the, the ref counter must be misleading. And then they all cheered, all the press people, and they said, <laughs> the, our team manager came over, give me a big hug, and he said, Norman, do you know what you've done? I said, no, you, you said, you bugger, you've done 172.4. You've shattered the record, and it, that, and it still stands today. That's, that record still stands today for that mile yeah. in Belgium. In Belgium, yeah. And the best part, Norman, is you set the record twice. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What happened? Well, the first time we uh, we did it, we, uh, we put it up to about 148. Then Pegaso went out there, they're a firm who builds sports cars in Spain, they fit a Chrysler supercharged engine, they put it up to about 155, 56, and so Lyons, the boss of Jaguar, said, uh, do it, he said, uh, what are you doing about this record? I said, what record? What's gone? He said, well, this Pegaso have took it off you, he said, uh, we ought to do something about it. So we set to, and that's when we introduced the bubble, undershield, headlight out, ram air, blow the tyres up, buff the tread off the tyres, two mil of rubber, put them up to 50 psi, small contact, and uh, that's how we did it. And Jeff, that brings me back to you. What are the, some of the details you went about in restoring this car back to when it set the world record. Well, after about a couple weeks after the, it set the record, it became back a competition car again. So they took all the stuff off. So the car raced for a while, and then it sat idle for like 20 years. We found the car about two years ago, Derek Hood at JD Classics, and we went about it restoring it. And it was about taking a competition car and putting it all right. And thanks to Norman, with a lot of details, we were able to find out where the air vents actually went, how big the bubble actually was, and all the different modifications that made to this car, including putting racing slick tires on this car to allow the speed as Norman was talking about. Hard to do? It was really hard to do. 6,000 hours of restoration. Normal restoration, three to 4,000, but this was 6,000 hours of work. Norman, until today, the last time you sat in this car was when? Uh, October 1953. <laughs> and what was it like for you to come back and see your car after 60 years? Well, it's great because uh, everything is correct. I remember it exactly as it was. This is exact exactly as it was. So it's all we need now is to find a piece of road and we'll go up and a better polish should give us another two more mile an hour. So can we find a piece of road and close it? <laughs> he may be in his 90s, but there's no doubt to us that Norman could go out and do it again. From Monterey, California, I'm Chris Woodyard for USAToday.com. Okay.